Hi, welcome to August. We're just a few days in. Uh, and speaking of August, what I want to do is talk about August's astrology with one of our favorite uh, astrologers here, Celeste Brooks, who will be joining us momentarily. Up oh, here she is. Okay, standing by on the request. Oh, she's so good. All right, go live, Celeste. Okay. <clears throat> Happening in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Hi, Celeste. Hi, Colin. It's so wonderful to see you. Likewise. Yes, it is. In the I same time you. zone. It's what a, what a new world. What a new world. I love your background. Thank you. Yeah, I'm camping out at my Virgo friend's house. Uh, so this is not this is not my interior design. This is uh, my Virgo friends. Naturally, all the books. Right? Yep. So Virgo. Yep. So Virgo. Um, and of course, always love your background. Always good to see you. Celeste, not like you need an introduction, but would you mind just reintroducing yourself to the people? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. So hi, everyone. I am Celeste Brooks of Astrology by Celeste. I'm an astrologer, coach, and intuitive. And my background is I have over 25 years in corporate experience, and I retired um, in May to pursue my astrology business full time using the moon cycles. And yes, yes, yes. I also teach my moon mastery program is starting again in um, September. So wow. yes, yes. Yes, yeah, yes. Perfect time. Back to school, Virgo season. Let's learn. Let's educate. I love it. And so how is this new career endeavor going for you? I would imagine you're loving it. Sometimes scary, a little bit of both. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm loving it. So I have a Taurus sun, Aries moon, cancer rising. Mm -hmm. My Taurus sun freaks out about the stability. My Aries moon loves it. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's just exciting and fun. And oh, it's so freeing to, it is. I feel like um, the eight of swords in reverse. I have dropped <laughs> the chains. <laughs> yes, and people are giving you congratulations, as am I. Yeah, it's a really, really, really big step. And I remember every time we've spoken together, uh, people have been joining with you in that concern around like, wow, I really want to quit this job. I want to take the big leap. Do you have any maybe continued advice for folks who are experiencing that too? Yeah, well, really lay the foundation. I mean, yeah. this is a time where we're restructuring our lives. So yeah. it's really a good time to that. think about that um, building blocks. What are the building blocks in your life? If you do make the change, um, are you set up to do so? I mean, it really is an employee's market. So it's okay to ask for you what you want from your employer if the situation you're in is okay, but you'd like it to be get better. Because yeah. I think this is, it's really in the employee's hands. Because people are, it's a great resignation. People are saying goodbye every day. Someone is telling me they quit their job. But yeah, yeah. And like release limitations, I think is a big message. With Saturn and Jupiter, both in, like when they met in Aquarius, starting this new cycle, mm -hmm. that it's a new world release perceived preconceived notions and dream bigger that's my message to people oh oh you know what so i said we're always like what are we going to talk about we get we usually get talking points and then we don't talk about the talking points we're going to try to talk about the talking points oh yeah the always August, right yeah but now i like have a really interesting question because since this is what we do for a living you know a lot of times we can almost you know forecast and anticipate certain things i'm wondering as an astrologer what didn't you see coming about the transits you're currently living in. What really took you by surprise? Um, just how much, um, just how much people are throwing off the chains. Like with mm -hmm. the, I mean, we saw the restructuring, mm -hmm. but like seeing things and I post on my stories about like where a whole Burger King, like everybody quit from Burger King. They said they'd had it. Um, I did not see that. I did, I did not see this. I saw people releasing themselves from, from um, some preconceived notions, but not so much the shift. The thing that surprised me the most is that and people are choosing not to go back to work after the pandemic. That they're saying we've had it. We're not going to take this anymore for jobs that are toxic. They're like, 
So people are taking more risks for themselves than you would have thought when the hiring started again that people would be running back. So that's the thing that surprised me the most. And you're a part of it. I mean, did you, did yeah. you honestly know that you were going to sort of complete your corporate work well, well ahead of time, or did it kind of sneak up on you? What, I don't even know the whole, the whole narrative. Go ahead. So my intention had been to complete in December. Like I was planning to make the switch this coming December. Okay. And with the new moon in Aries that, you know, eclipses like just blow things into our lives and pull, yeah, that new moon in Aries, which was coupled with the, the, the eclipse in Gemini. Okay. It was like I made internally, it's like the only thing that's holding me back is fear. And I'm an Aries moon. Lean into that fearlessness and, and um, move, move forward. I love yeah. it. So you're, you almost did it effectively then, what, five or six months early mm -hmm. than you expected? Wow. So the new moon in Aries and the solar eclipse in Gemini were the benchmarks for you. You were like, mm -hmm. I've had enough. I've had enough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And it really does come down to fear. Yeah. I think, you know, what's, maybe it's just Mars and Virgo uh, happening now and Venus and Virgo as well. But what's really blowing my mind, back to what you said around yeah. you know, really putting in the structures, is how much habit and instilling habit in the present moment to support potential and future success is the way you show the universe, I'm taking my dream seriously. Please take my dream seriously because I'm going to put the habits, the systems, and the routines in place now to support all the energy of the dreams that I would like to see coming. I love that, Colin. That is the perfect message for this new moon in Leo. Okay. I love that, you know, the sun is in Leo, but Mars and Venus are in Virgo. That's right. So really about chop wood, carry water, do the routines, start like, and the new moon is such a great time to start a new routine. So yes. think about the people I'm going people to think about their vision. I'm having a, it's a free webinar this Saturday. You can sign up through the link in my bio or go to Wonderful. my website. Oh, and make sure you're following me, Astrology uh, Plus and Less. Please, please, please. And be. Yeah, it's going to be about, think like we've been visioning, really lit, dig into that Leo self-confidence. What do I want to create to bring joy in my life for the pleasure? And um, chop wood, carry water with the Virgo, Mars, and Venus, what we want to do and enjoy those mundane things about bringing these bring these routines and new habits into our lives yes with and enjoyment I, yeah with enjoyment i know so there's a running joke among astrologers and like students too that if we talked about the sixth house or if we talked about like real heavy virgo routines nobody would come because they find it boring <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, that's, that's exactly why we are finding ourselves in some of these issues. So did you almost proactively, Celeste, I, I, now I'm interviewing you, but I just think this is, this is what happens. Did you proactively have routines and systems in place to support your work as a professional full-time astrologer now before you made the lead to leave? Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Well, what I did was I really worked on having controlled expansion. So the first habit I put into place was like with my lives. So I, I want to gain new audiences. So I said I made a commitment. Well, just with posting first, it was OK. I'm going to post three times a week, no matter what, on social media. Okay. Then it was I'm going to do a live every Sunday at 930 AM. And so I just <laughs> continually added routines that I could commit to. Like I do a newsletter twice a month, new moon, full moon, no matter what. Um, yeah, so those routines supported the progression of my career. Also, and like for a while, I'm gonna tell on myself, Colin. Uh, go ahead, <laughs> I'll, I will too, go ahead, but you go first. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to be part of, I heard this podcast or something about the 5 a.m. club, and for a while I was trying to at 5 a.m. <laughs> that did not work. <laughs> okay. Your Taurus ass was person. like, this is horrible. This is way too early. Go ahead. <laughs> but, okay, I changed it. I made an adjustment to make it the 6.30 a.m. club. <laughs> Congratulations. But, but getting up early and getting the day started, I find, you know, when I first stopped working, I gave myself a little time to, like, sleep in and all that stuff. But now I'm back to the habit, and I feel like, I get a lot more done because being an entrepreneur, there's so much coming in all the time 
really working to like um, that Virgo essence. I'm so happy we've yes. got this Virgo stuff because like the intestines, like you really can distill to the essence of the nutrients of what you what you need and what you <laughs> what you want to do to move yourself forward and nourish yourself. I love this. And I think what it's helping me understand is there's a little bit of a, a, a question because the week I was born, the node shifted. So either oh. if you ask one astrology software, it says South Node in Leo. If you ask another astrology software, it says South Node in Virgo. Mm. But I don't know. I think be, I am full blown South Node in Virgo. The more mm -hmm. I, the more I watch my routines transform my life and the way that I watch my study of habits and consistent behaviors just really create results that I'm so happy with. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm very much at home in the Virgo Chateau. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we have the same nodal concerns? Yeah, here? yeah, I'm a, I'm a south node in Virgo too. See, see, and look at us talking about routines. Come on, come on now, okay? <laughs> so I, the, we started, uh, well, we, just, we decided that we would talk about the astrology of the month. So let's dive right in. We'll just swim into the, in the soup here. Yeah. What are you most excited about around the astrology in August? Yeah, I'm so excited about the, the, the new moon in Leo. I just think this Sunday, folks. Yeah, yeah it's this Sunday. I think that is the best thing about the month. I really like the build up to it, how we had the sun opposite Saturn, where people felt, you know, we all felt like in some ways, in some aspect in our life, coming up against restrictions. And then on Friday is going to be the square, the sun squares Uranus, where there's going to be an opportunity for breakthroughs. So I think going into the new moon, that there's going to be this, this energy of change is already going to be here for people to keep going with that. Yeah. And back to like methods, I really appreciate how fixed you are in explaining <laughs> that astrology is a continued conversation. It's a continued dialogue. Sometimes I can only focus on like, oh, Venus is entering here, the Newman Leo, but like I forget to bring in the, the buildup, the continued mm -hmm. prerequisites. So I just want to acknowledge like that's a really beautiful approach that you had to astrology. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's so good. I got to remember that. Thank you. Uh, so how, how are you anticipating breakthroughs for other people? Do you think it's going to be related to fear? Do you think it's going to be related to liberation and innovation? Do you have a, like kind of a broad stroke of topics that you think will experience yeah. that breakthrough well, with her? This week, there is so much about relationships. And this has even gone back the past month when Mars and Venus went through through Leo and did yeah. everything is doing this opposition to Saturn and then the square um, to Uranus. And now this, the, um, the South Node and Juno, the asteroid of relationships and marriage and partnership is in Sagittarius. And it just recently went direct and Juno and um, the South Node are meeting this week, I believe. And so people are, and people have been restructuring their relationships. Some people are going to break free from relationships. Some people are going to recommit, but there's energy to really come together and talk about the shadows and figure out how you're going to move forward in a, in, in a way that's beneficial to both parties and helps you expand with that Sagittarius. Um, let us know in the comment section if you're going through that because I sure know I am. Okay, I'm not gonna get too uh, too personal here, but like that, that is absolutely what I'm experiencing momentarily with Juno and Sag. And yes, oh, hold on, you froze a little bit. I think you're coming back. Hold on, Celeste. Hold on. It's can anybody let me know if Celeste froze too? Am I am I going through a weird tech issue here? No. Hold on, hold please. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think Celeste froze. I'm pretty sure she's going to come back. Okay. Oh, all right. She's going to come back. I feel it. Here we go. Hold on. Hold, please. <laughs> oh, 2022, 2021. See, I'm already a year ahead. Welcome to being an astrologer. I don't know what time it is. Okay? Because I have, I'm too busy holding this in my friggin' hand. So I just get confused every once in a while. So I, I accepted. Am I so back? Am I, I back? Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was just talking and all of a sudden it's like, thank you, the video's ended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Here I was thinking of drinking in your wisdom. Oh so no, Ven Venus Jen has had two people scream at her over the weekend. That's mm -hmm. awful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me, Colin? 
perfectly, yes. And I could see you in real time, too. Okay. So it must have just been a fluke. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Ooh. No, no, no. Oh, for the record, this is the ephemeris. This is the calendar that astrologers use to situate uh, time and place and what's anticipating. I think Celeste froze again. <laughs> no! Okay, so listen. While this energy is being gathered, folks, okay? Do me a favor, let me know, because I'm pretty sure we're now going to have to situate and talking about relationships a little bit, which is one of my favorite things to discuss, okay? Uh, it's the yeah, ephemeris, people. So it's just the American ephemeris, and it's how you can track uh, calendars. Like, I have the astrology until November 2046. It goes until 2050. So this is how we can situate things. Um, Celeste is coming back, I'm sure. Uh, would you mind letting me know some topics that you're experiencing relational concerns in or relational... Uh, curiosities with. I think we can sort of move the conversation in that direction because that seems to be something that people are uh, relating to. Uh, oh, wow. So people are saying it's been totally feeling like the worst Mercury retrograde without being in retrograde. And then Katie said, oh, it could be a phone overheating. Okay. Okay. Could be. All right. So I'm standing by on Celeste returning. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll talk momentarily just about uh, relating and the new moon in Leo coming up. Hmm. Oh, if you want a question, how do you answer? Oh, here. Okay, here we go. Third time's the charm, folks. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Thank you, Jess. That's amazing. Oh, I wish you were with me. Okay. I have no idea what's going on, Colin. But... Me neither. We're... <laughs> We are adapting. Um, people are suggesting that maybe your phone got too uh, overheated. So it might be a heating issue. Well, I turned off my, um, what do you call it? My internet. from, And so I'm just on the, the cell the tower signal. So yeah. I'm thinking maybe my, for some reason, my internet here was having problems. So right. Here we are. <laughs> we can do this. I just love that we are demonstrating adaptability in real time which is always hard when we have fixed transits and fixed people in the room so like way to go um so oh, and can i say something about that please, please this is so important for everyone so when you feel frustration to try to or something seems like it's going a little sideways try to have faith stay centered and just work through creatively the problem to 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 get going rather than and with both of us i'm sure our virgo south knows at times in our lives we've like just flipped out and it's a, a life lesson to learn to go with the flow and be flexible yes ma'am so the sun is still <laughs> in my 12th house and the last two months have really just been all about faith no plan all about faith and it's been really really interesting and compelling so Celeste, there was actually a great conversation started around relationships. Do you mind if we go in that topic without being? Oh, okay? yes. 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 So, what have you studied and researched about the a Juno moving direct in Sag and its aspects to the nodes? I think you mentioned. Go ahead. Yeah. So, that it is. So, Juno and Sag means there needs to be like finding, finding the higher purpose, finding the wisdom, like bigger things in relationship. And, with the whole nodes in Gemini and Sagittarius, there is such a call for people to reconsider their relationships, release preconceived notions, realize we're in a new world, and come together with their partners and decide, you know, how they're going to move forward. And when um, the, the, the direct meets the south node, there's going to be some people may and I know people are breaking up, so some people may decide to go separate ways. But mm. if you can work through it with your partner, there's such a wonderful opportunity to create your relationship on a, on a, a higher level, more consciously. Yes, yes. Like. Yeah, so, and then uh, another Taurus friend of mine here says, identify need versus want in relationships and getting curious about whether dissatisfaction mm -hmm. is because needs are not being met or if wants or demanding of others, what I should be giving myself. Ooh! I yes. love that. 
100%. No, this is great. All right, we'll start here because this is a perfect kind of beginning uh, way to continue my expressions. Listen, it's the people. I just got to be in real time, <laughs> Leo Rising dramatic. Like, I love it. I think it's thoughtful. You, uh, my, my people, my readers, my guests, you are all so thoughtful and intelligent. I just, I love the conversation. Yeah. I love your audience, Colin. It's They're so the wonderful. Oh, there's your mom. And my Hi, mom, Kathleen. right. Yeah, and she's with person. my niece, so it's a family affair. You know, my Mars in Cancer, I love it. It's like, all right, everybody, let's come over. We're going to talk. The dinner's on the table. Get cozy. Where are your keys? I don't want you driving. Okay, but wait. So we'll focus on relationships now. I think what you're, you're making me think of is how a lot of us actually have a lot of these agreements and relationships. Uh, um, a guest that I had on here, Caitlin, uh, she's a, li a licensed marriage and family therapist. A lot of our relational troubles come from these agreements we make internally around like, this is the way a relationship should look like. Mm -hmm. So are you suggesting that we review those places and get curious about maybe writing new relational agreements or new relational stories? I love that. That just popped into my mind, The Four Agreements. You know that book by John Miguel? Speaking of Virgo season, John Miguel Ruiz. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so yeah, maybe this is a call for people to come together and what are our new agreements and come up with four new agreements for relationship, realizing we're in a new world, releasing Saturn Uranus, releasing those old structures that are no longer serving us. Um, yeah. Oh, someone's having a problem with a new neighbor. They moved in on wow. the roller cuts, making a lot of noise. I am not shocked. Okay, yes. Well, mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite uh, authors, Esther Perel, says that every relationship is a story, so write well and edit often. Yes, I love that. Yeah, yeah we're all rewriting the story of your relationship. Yes, 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 yes. So that's something we can do this weekend. And then and that takes a lot of courage. Oh. And do we have coming. a new moon in Leo or do we have a new moon in Leo this Sunday? Okay, yes. wait, so go ahead. What, why did you mention courage? Go ahead. It takes a lot of courage to, because to open that Pandora's box, you may, and I think Pandora's active, the asteroid Pandora. Oh, you, sure, that's things may one. come up that are uncomfortable to deal with. And so I think this new moon in Leo is really a call to move past the fear of what could come and the nodes are karmic so the story that's uncovered is something that's supposed to come to your attention but yeah yes. that's that's yeah. important to remember yeah it takes a lot of courage to sort of say you know i'd actually really love to try this i'm gonna practice vulnerability in real time here yeah the the, the dilemma that i'm currently experiencing is that i really am enjoying sort of gallivanting from place to place like i love it my gemini son is on Fire, honey. Okay, I am so happy to go from like Arizona, California, North Carolina, New York, da, 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 da. and then my sister and others have been like, "Okay, that's great." And you might have a really difficult time establishing and maintaining a relationship. Hmm. You know, yeah. so I'm, I'm I'm met with the oh gosh, could I create a vision in my head and find a romantic partner that sustains that, right? Or do I need to edit my best case scenario and negotiate it so that I can have a sustainable structure for a romantic and intimate partner? I want to, I want to challenge that thinking in that oh, okay. with the world has changed, so many people are working remotely and, and whatnot. <laughs> How about Colin, you call in what you want. So you want maybe a partner who has the same adventurous spirit who can roll with you and where you want to go. You know what? Why do you have to said. give it up? <laughs> I know, I'm like, wait, can I, can we, can we talk win-win here? Can we like, right? I, that's what I'm hoping for. Creative, thank you, thank you. That's why I needed to hear, exactly. Because why would I not? I have a, a niece in North Carolina who's growing up. I want to see her and I have friends in California. I want to see them. Like, we can make this work. My best friend who's an Aries moon, her and her partner are now moving to Puerto Rico and they're going to live entirely remotely and just create a whole new world for themselves. And I just think that's what we're all being pushed to do is to use our imagination to create new stories, relational scripts, and personal structures to support what we want. I 
Totally agree. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So now let's dive right into, thank you, everybody. Yes, I'm manifesting this. This feels good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go right into, I, I usually never talk about my personal relationships. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. Uh, related to the Sundays and the moon in Leo, how are you mm -hmm. feeling about this on Lionsgate? You know, we got a lot of energy <laughs> happening on Sunday. How would you forecast that for the people watching? Yeah, I love it. So there's, uh, you know, I fi I'm finding this new moon a somewhat like on the gentler side. Okay. I like how Mars is squaring the nodes. So mm. it's giving us an opportunity to stay in the past or to move forward into the future. So in Mars okay. and Virgo, and like we talked about earlier, we can set the habits and routines to, to bring forth what we want in our life. Yes. And the moon is in a relationship. The new moon is in a biquintile with Neptune. And Neptune is all about the dream. Biquintiles are grace notes where we can integrate these energies in a creative way. So yeah, so bringing these new habits into our lives and taking actions that can bring our dreams to life is what I'm seeing with this 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 new moon. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. And there's a yod to. Oh wait, is that? Is yeah. that a yacht? Someone is singing a whole new world. Oh, no, it's a it's, yeah. it's, 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 there's, an, there's an adjustment. It's a, a king comes from Mercury to Neptune. Okay. So there's adjusting energy um, that is needed for us to, to make mind shifts to, get what we, to go forward with what we want. But there's the month-long cycle. So if you put down your, your objectives and your intentions and like work through them over the month. There's also this larger 27 month cycle. You can bring forward what you want, but I think there's a call to action. The square is activating us to take action for getting Leo, our Leo desires met. I love it. And you know what you're making me thinking of is just how the central organizing agent of intention setting, of negotiating your relational agreements, right? It's all imagination. Really? Yes. Imagine. You know, imagine. So now I'm curious, Celeste, have you ever had a moment in your life where your imagination, rhythm nation, <laughs> wasn't as illustrative as you wanted it to be? Like, did you ever feel like you couldn't even imagine with your imagination what a best case scenario option could look like? Yes. Okay. Yes. And how did you a make A lot that of my life. Yeah, okay. a lot of my life. If you ask, like in 2018, I knew I wanted to make a change. I knew I wanted to not continue to be on the corporate thing for another whatever years. But I couldn't see. I couldn't see what it was. So I stayed open. And then, uh, frankly, it's Uranus, the great awakener, who has awakened me and to make that mind shift change yes. to see a, a different life for myself. Uh, so. uh, congratulations. And you're living proof of that every day. Because yeah, I want to almost like gauge the audience here and see, let me know in the comments section, is the vivid imagination and your ability to imagine something that you struggle with? Or would you say it's something that you feel really proficient in? Yeah, I'd be curious to know about that. Because even when it comes down to like the eighth house eroticism, Mars and sexuality, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the work that we do around those topics has to do with your ability to imagine pleasure, not always be in the act of giving and receiving it. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of the undercurrent, the imagination, right? And that's why it was Mexican essayist Octavio Paz who said, imagination is the central agent for erotic satisfaction. We just have to imagine it. Okay, so someone said feel really proficient and love it. Yeah. Struggling now for sure, said others. That's okay. Yep. Just, okay. Also too proficient. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. So we got imagination. Yeah, within, okay. Some say a struggle. I can't imagine things struggling. Okay. Okay, so pretty good. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this yeah. is interesting. Celeste, would you say based on these questions, right, we have a kind of wide skill set around imagining here. Mm -hmm. Where would you tell them to start? What kind of suggestions would you have for them? Go ahead. Yeah. So if you with the new moon ceremony, if you, you know, create a sacred space, yes. um, put on some, you know, soft music, have bring in the elements, fire, earth, air and water, maybe a candle, 
Um, I love oracle cards or tarot, yes. something, because that can really bring through things that outside of your outside of your vision, so yes, from the sure. imagination. And then do take some time to do some writing and just don't correct yourself. Just write what do you want out of life and then just keep going. And like you have to keep writing for 10 minutes. <laughs> and then things will come to your and don't edit. Just do it. Just write. This is that Mercury in conjunct Neptune. Like there's an adjustment needed to, to make that mindset sh shift that I think bring things out of the head and into the paper and through the heart onto the paper is just a wonderful way with to do power. so. And, with, with, the, and with, with the cards, what do I need to know about my imagination or my dreams or the, the possibilities out there for me? You can ask all kinds of questions. I love this. Yeah, because I love also that your uh, suggestions were rooted in kind of environmental shifts, right? Like change your environment, you know, yeah. like you're going into those things. Oh, there's a great question here. Oh, they're moving so fast. Um, and then also getting into dialogue with God as we understand it or through Oracle cards, etc. I just want to say that I finally got into like morning journaling and morning pages because I'm doing the artist way. Mm -hmm. Celeste, I don't know why I put up such a fight before then. I had no idea how effective that would be because the meditation and the study of A Course in Miracles helped me get a message in, but I wasn't getting a message out. So like yeah. now my morning routine is get a message in, get it out. So that's how I can start to imagine. And that's what you also suggested, you know, using the imagination to ask for what you want. And I organize my journal by the moon phases. Oh, that's so great. The, the new moon at 16 Leo, then the first quarter moon. And then every week I go back and read what I've written for yeah. the week before. Yes. Um, especially at the end of the month, at the end of the moon cycle, go back and read everything and see what's transpired. Yes. See how, you know, you worked with the energies of what was going on. And it brings so much it brings so much richness and, and, and oh. understanding of how to move forward. You can do it in the balsamic phase. So we're going to be going in the balsamic phase probably tomorrow. Oh yeah, right, um, right. The balsamic the is the phase just before the new moon, right? Yeah. 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 So oh. that's a great time to review what you had written over the last month. Oh, I love it. You love a system, don't you, Taurus? <laughs> I do. Love a system. <laughs> Give me a method. Okay, and here's a great question. What does working towards manifesting our imagined goals and desires look like within this really uncertain context of a new pandemic reality? How does one, how does one work to sit with and through the fear? That's a great frigging question. Okay. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to start? Yeah, how does one learn to sit with and through the fear? of the um, certain pandemic reality. And yeah. let me know in the comment section if that's something you relate to, because I'm pretty sure most of us, myself included, are in that phase. But you go yeah. first, Celeste. Go yeah, ahead. how do we, we don't have any choice but to. We, we need to just uh, pr put support systems of ourselves. If nothing else, Saturn, Pluto, that, you know, from 2020 showed us there, how little control we have outside, you know, over life, over whatever. Prince and Pauper all came up against this pandemic. It changed the whole world. All we can do is trust in our higher power that, that um, we are on a path, we are here for a purpose, and that we can sit through and move through the fear with tools like meditation, um, running maybe it'll be for you, or whatever it is for you to center yourself. Um, that we move through these difficult times because next year is our Pluto return as the United States. So, <laughs> and isn't it like 222, 2022? It's, it's like, like you can't make this shit up. You really can't. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say, Jess, you said good question to Gabby. Gabby, I want to see your question because Jess is such an amazing helper here. So, Jess, if you want to repeat your question, I want to see where it was. And I also yeah. think that Death Priestess says, find the resources inside. Yeah. That's, that's really all we can do. Nothing can, yeah. And that's, that's big Taurus energy too, is like, how do I find safety and security Nothing. internally, as opposed to situating it in something externally defined or situationally based, circumstance dependent, yada, yada. Yeah. You know right. what I started? A gratitude what? journal. 
So I actually have a physical, um, a physical base where I write on a piece of paper, what am I grateful for? And, you know, put it in there. Oh. And you can do that every day, like that gratitude practice, you yes. know, you, you got a roof over he your head. Thank you. You've got your, 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 loving whoever parents friends husband wife right, pets right. whatever be be yeah. in gratitude for all of those people well and i think what mars and virgo <laughs> and venus and virgo and the kind of leo energy is synthesizing to help us understand is that we do have the freedom theoretically to choose the thoughts and the perceptions that will ultimately create the behavior that have a strong correlation to the outcomes we experience mm-hmm which is not to say, oh, change your thoughts, change your whole world, not necessarily, but it is the idea of what are we all doing to take responsibility for the thinking, the focus, the concentration, and the perception we choose to choose in the morning to optimize the healthiest interpersonal and personal results. Does that, am, I, am I warm, cold? What do you think? I like that. Yeah. yeah. What are you choosing? What are you choosing? And how do you move forward despite the fear is another thing to think about. Yes, yes. Because I, and I was just thinking about this over the last few weeks is that I don't think the presence of fear is the problem. I mm -hmm. think what I do to respond to my fear is the problem. Yes. That's, yeah, it's not fear. It's how I self-protect, mm -hmm. right? So, and then how do I can, how do I maintain bravery and fear, you know, kind of concurrently? Emily just quoted a really funny, uh, idea. I feel a Les Brown quote, you were chosen at 300 million sperm created on purpose with a purpose. Your dreams are important and necessary because there's greatness in you. Yeah, it is true. And I love that. These are hard ideas to reconcile given the scarcity culture that we live in, given what's happening in the state of the world. And also it is our, it is our freedom really. To I was just thinking about to. scarcity mindset, Colin. Oh, we are on me. the same wavelength. I know, always, somehow or another. Maybe it's the nodes. Talk to me, baby. Where are you thinking about or considering scarcity culture? Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I pull this card a lot for myself. It's the it's a Treasure Island card. And this Ooh, is cool. Colette Baron reads uh, Wisdom of the Oracle. And I pull it in reverse when I need a message to get out of scarcity mindset. There will always be enough. What is yours will not pass you by. These are some of the uh, mantras that I, I tell myself. Experience life as it comes. Um, yeah, yeah. So getting out of scarcity mindset is, and into an abundance mindset is, uh, key. Is, is so key to moving forward through this time, I think. Do you have a working definition of scarcity mindset? Like, what does that sound like? when we're in it do you have ideas or thoughts about that oh for me it's like i'm going to go broke and be homeless right. <laughs> like those things <laughs> like i'm like becoming an entrepreneur in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> right okay so it's... or that like feeling like you're not gonna have enough money food safety security love anything like going towards the negative of the lack Okay. rather than the more is mm. the scarcity mindset mm. to me. Mm. And yeah. Mm. And, and you're, you're, that, yeah. You're making me think of, again, the new moon and Leo folks, because yeah. yeah, usually if it's, oh my God, I'm not promoted enough, wealthy enough, smart enough, good enough, uh, uh, contributing enough. Where does that usually come down to? Because I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So it goes from behavioral, characterological, circumstantial circumstances to the personal, and now it's like, oh, this is true to me, my character only. So when we move to, from a place of scarcity to wholeheartedness under maybe the Sundays New Moon and Leo, you can say, I am more than enough. My birthright is to be more than enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna stop coddling, defending, and enabling my fear-based mind because what the fuck has it done for me lately? Mm -hmm. Other mm -hmm. than keep me in circumstances that I'm not totally thrilled with. So mm -hmm. I need to start aligning with, oh, I am more than enough. I'm imperfect, don't get me yeah. wrong but I'm here to get it right. I really am. Yeah. And so that's what we could think about. Cause yeah, scarcity culture is the belief that we are not insert qualifier enough, but mm -hmm. Leo actually is like, who are you talking to yourself? Because yeah, Leo true. is about, I am more than enough plus a twist. <laughs> okay. So I don't want to hear it. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be that. And that's Leo. That's Leo energy. And yes, Nancy, it is so fucking hard to move out of it. It really, really, really is. And habit, systems, routine, rituals, visualization, and realizations, and relationships, yada, yada, yada. You get that shit in place, and I think it becomes a little bit easier would be my recommendation. Any thoughts, feedback, questions for me about that, Celeste? Go ahead. I am uh, 10,000 agree with what you said. <laughs> Visualization, imagination. Yes. Uh, you, can't, you can't bring it in. Neptune is the ultimate manifester. You cannot bring oh. something into life unless you can imagine it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the other thing that came to me is being more receptive. There's so much yang energy about like, we're such a sun focused culture about just go, 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 go. Yes. Like, like take some time for that receptivity. And I like that with the Leo and the Virgo together. Mm -hmm. I love this mm -hmm. imagery, imagery of like that yin and yang and yes. the seamstress who like, who's a designer who can bring forward like this beautiful creation, but has the precision to knit it together or the like the no. the fortitude to build the routines and rituals to bring a beautiful creation to life. Ah, oh, beautiful. You just made me think of, I'm just gonna say this quickly. So I went to Parsons to do school for design and study oh. fashion for like six years. Like I, my whole education is in fashion, like the, the secondary part of it, right? Uh -huh. There were so many Virgos and Capricorns in the program, it blew me away. It was the precision, the detail, like, I, I, it just totally transforms me. I'm like, okay, Virgos. And you know what? Let's just bring this up because someone said something really interesting. I vacillate between not feeling like I'm enough and also feeling like I'm more than enough. That scarcity vibe is real though. So you know what? I, I, I don't want to bring this up, but I feel like we got to bring it up. I think we should talk about shame really quick. Is that okay? Oh, yes, so, definitely. Yeah, so how do you experience shame within the context of this conversation? Mm. So shame comes when we make mistakes, that yeah. shadow of Virgo, and then start beating ourselves up. And shame is a feeling that you can feel throughout your body. Like, right. I, I feel it, I think in my solar plexus and my, like down to my root. So yes, yeah, and shame is ever present with, um, yeah, not living up to expectations, I think, in our culture is a lot of things that what people come around about shame. People have had a lot of experiences with shame with potentially losing their jobs or how they reacted to working at home and the phone ringing and the kids screaming and all this thing. People have all come, we've all come face to face, I think, with shame over the last year and a half based on these circumstances outside of our control. Without a doubt. And that's actually why clinicians call shame the universal emotion because mm -hmm. we all experience it, right? Yeah. And so I, it's interesting. I actually think, I love that we kind of took this conversation really organically. I think what stands in front of us and is, could be complicating the proximity to what we want and who we want to become is our shame resilience or our experiences with mm -hmm. shame. Yeah, so it's the belief that we are not enough, that we're fundamentally unworthy. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I could never. And the reason why I brought this up to the original question, and then we'll keep it open for more questions, was Shane's primary messaging is you are not enough, and then who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. There is no winning. So what you have to do is reality check those messages, okay, mm -hmm. and share it. Share your shame story with someone who's earned the right to hear it, because shame cannot survive if it's spoken. It stays strong in silence, secrecy, and judgment. Mm -hmm. Experiencing shame, absolutely, imposter syndrome is a function of shame. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Please make sure that you share your shame story with a qualified empathy holder who will get you back on your feet and keep you uh, as brave and engaged and all in and courageous as possible. And of course, attribution matters. That's all the work of Dr. Brene Brown. But I would really like us because we have days before Sunday, think about, wow, where do I go when I'm in shame? What am I experiencing? Mm -hmm. Who do I talk to when I'm in that moment? Or do I keep it to myself? Right? Mm -hmm. I think um, Simone Biles can be an, uh, someone in the public eye who can really think about with that. Yeah. And I think that shame has a lot to do with that Aquarius. People can feel shame about not fitting in and what have you. And I wrote a post about this, about how that um, 
that Leo full moon activated her Chiron. That's right. And can you imagine the shame of this top athlete having to say, I cannot, I cannot compete. Right. I have to step back and take care of myself and my mental health and my physical body because I just can't do it. Yeah. That Pluto humbles that she had um, Pluto on the lunar eclipse activated her Pluto. And that shame that she must have felt. And if she can get through this, and she went on to win a bronze at the, um, once that Saturn opposite sun cleared, yeah. she was able to compete again. And the fact that she was able to move forward, what in our own lives can we not get over or get past the shame from with that? With I, that, um, yeah, I love that you're making it transferable too. And mm -hmm. would you agree that most people were celebrating Simone's decision like universally? It just seems like most people had nothing but like you take care of you, honey, right? Yeah, I think the predominance of people felt yeah. that way. But there were haters, you know, there were haters, right? And that's big yeah. Leo energy too. Like they're always yeah. gonna hate because then I'm doing what was before you tell me about my bronze medal, let me see your gold. Yeah, uh, I love, he's a, I thought about you, what is his name, Michael, oh, I can't, he's a fellow New Yorker, a Long oh. Islander, who was talking about people who were criticizing Simone Biles, and he was like, you so-and-so, you can't even get off your couch and do a somersault, and here you are, <laughs> I'll have to text you. <laughs> aggressive we are so vile like but it's true it's like let me see you do those moves before you tell simone how to do a better job shut up uh that was exactly you know what, what i mean like, why are you talking that's big long island energy silence okay i don't want to hear it from you i don't want to hear it okay and you know what to that point folks i would kind of like you to let your Leo energy of grounded confidence, say the same shit to your shame voice. Like, why are you talking? Why yes. are you talking? Talk like a Long Islander to your shame voice. Shut that. <laughs> <laughs> or Jersey, because I'm in the company of a Jersey yes. girl. Come on now. Okay. Right. And it, there is something where you're just like, yo, let me silence you all the fucking way up. Okay. Because I know more or less than everybody else. I'm an instrument of God, of, of peace, of of nonviolence, of, of power, of radiance. So yeah. like, I'm gonna do what I was born to do and you're gonna shut the up. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, exactly. it's, yeah, why are you even talking? And yeah. tell that to all the other critics. Like, why are you in my trash? And if you are contributing, you don't have time to criticize. So typically the people that criticize are the punk ass bitches that act like they're fucking tough and they're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, just keep on doing it, honey. Anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> already started <laughs> i know you're like what do you mean you're already on your way but and you know i'm not from new jersey god bless but celestis yes 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 yeah. and jersey. think about yeah for your critics like yeah Go ahead. <laughs> if somebody is coming at you um another another um another example of extreme strength i saw this week was scarlett johansson yes yeah, so, so, um, so, 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 so. This Disney. woman is going against Disney. It's like, and this is that Sagittarius energy. Oh. She is like, yes, <laughs> I am just so impressed with that. I yeah. mean, against a multinational company and think about the Aquarius energy. She's not just doing this for her. She's doing this for actors who oh. have been treated poorly by these systems, these um, yeah. Capricornian Ooh. studios and stuff and they think they can just run to the bank with their subscriptions from releasing her movie concurrently and that they're not going to give her her piece of the pie <laughs> she said no you're not <laughs> <laughs> and i bet they're going to be sorry they didn't just give her that extra whatever <laughs> you know what i'm laughing because uh scarlet is from manhattan she's a new york woman too yeah oh. she's like what's what are you doing with my money no the fuck you're not <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, channel that inner East Coaster, that New Jersey, New York with your life and uh, stand up for yourself. Embrace that Leo energy and uh, yeah, move past shame to, yeah. to keep it moving forward. Yes. And, and you know what? This is also happening in the midst of two full moon and Aquarian, uh, Aquarius, mm -hmm. right? And so I just want you also to think about really like 
who are the people in your life that you can reach out and share your shame story with? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what's really interesting about shame is it wants you to believe that you are the only one. So when you talk about with other people and you realize you're not the only one, it moves you out of the, the, the shame spiral into empathy and like, okay, I might have made a mistake that might have gone off the rails, but I am not a mistake. I am not a fuck up, right? So yes. who, are you, who are the people who you can lean on to get you out of uh, mm -hmm. the shame spiral? But that's or I made a mistake, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I'd love to see the culture, you know, move in that direction, but go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I made a mistake. It's okay. No it's not the end of the world. If Simone Biles can get up and get back on that balance beam after that international stuff, I can, you know, I put a typo in an email or whatever it is you're really in shape about. I, I can get past that. Or, you know, people do have real shame for things, mistakes they made, really. Totally. But you can still move past that and move forward. Like, think of someone in the collective who has modeled the behavior you want to see in yourself. Yes. And I like that you mentioned it, the collective and modeling it for yourself because someone just said, it's true, my closest friend and I do this for each other and it reduces the feeling greatly. Right? Yes, I'm yeah. not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Cast a light on shame and watch the healing happen. Yes. Yeah, folks. Like, and we have days before the new moon in Leo. So I really want us to wrestle with how do I respond to shame? Do I believe shame? Who do I talk to about shame? Right? Where has it guided the, you know, the great dictator of wrong decisions? There's so much there, but I love it. So I know. want, can I say something, Colin? Oh, I love it. Show. I think this is homework for everyone between okay. now and the moon, new moon. Find someone you can talk to about something that you felt shame for. Because as we go in the balsamic phase, it's a really great time of release. So release something with someone you trust. Um, and if you can also just write it down yourself, if you, you don't, yeah. Yeah, reach out and share the shame story. I love that you mm -hmm. gave that homework assignment. And also folks, please use the word shame. So the only reason why I'm being uh, nitpicky about this is because uh, Dr. Brene Brown, before she became this extraordinary uh, uh, best-selling author, she actually published an academic journal on shame resilience theory. And she said that you have to name shame to regulate its power over you. Mm -hmm. It's an emotion that has to be named. So it's not embarrassment. It's not guilt. It's not anger. You have to name shame because once you do, it tends to release some of its chokehold over you. So just make sure when you talk to your people, you use that word. Yeah, and look up the definition and look up the Latin root and think about that. Oh, okay. my God. You know, I've never done that, but I really, I ought to. I really, really, really ought to. Yes. Yeah. And yes, there's something else about Aquarius from raspberry.com oh. or raspberry.neon. Shame actually keeps you from true humility because you're focused on feeling bad instead of taking responsibility. Yeah. I love that. 100%. Love that. 100%. Yes. So yeah, over. think about how the shame is taking, keeping you from taking responsibility. And someone mentioned Monica Lewinsky. That's another, can you imagine? I mean, she was the butt, I mean, a lot of your audience maybe is too young, but. Oh no, well, I, I came of age at that time. No, I was seven or eight, yeah. Yeah, what she's been through, the fact that she can go out and hold her head up high and continue on with life, yes. And she yeah. is a Leo, isn't that funny? Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and she had a TED talk that like really moved me. I want to rewatch it because mm -hmm. it's been a few years called Click with Compassion. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like I'm going to tell you right now, if that scandal went down in the you know late 2000s nowadays in social media, she's like, I don't know if I'd still be alive. I can't even imagine. Yeah, the, the yeah. whole, the, when the social media people come out and I mean, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't even imagine. No, yeah. me either. So are there other transits in the seven minutes we have left, Celeste, but I love this is where oh. we went. So organic conversation among friends that you would like to focus on. Well, Venus is moving into Libra on the 15th of the month. That's so right. it'll be at home. So after doing this work of um, Juno and the South Node, I think that can set relationships on a nice path forward once Venus is in Libra again. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the month. So it may be like a little trial by fire and then a gift about, you know, being able to partner and connect and 
Love it. That intellectual joy and that love of art and music and all that kind of stuff with mm -hmm. Venus and Libra. I'm very excited about that. I always have a blast during Venus and Libra. And also it could be a really, like you were saying, a healing agent for what's happening now because I think it helps us leverage opposites. I think it helps us manage polarities, which is what is, mm -hmm. oh my God, the hardest struggle in relationships where it's like, I'm right, you're wrong, be quiet. You know, so <laughs> Venus and Libra yeah. gives us a little bit more decorum. So yeah, yeah and Mercury and Leo, what? <laughs> be right. <laughs> so that's a nice, that's a nice. Why balance. are you talking? Right, that's big Mercury and Leo energy. I don't want to hear it from you. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, and that day also Mercury squares the nodes the same day. Mm. So that's that's pretty interesting. So All Mercury will have moved into Virgo by that time. Yes, yeah, so, yes. People were asking when Venus enters Libra. My calendar says oh, the 15th. 15th, but it could be because I'm using East Coast 15th or 16th, yeah. depending on the part of the world that you're in. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Um, I have. It's 9:26 here, so it'll be 12:26 where you are. So it'll be the next day. Yeah. Bingo, bingo. So you're excited about that. And then, uh, speaking of Uranus, a few days later, Uranus goes retrograde on August 19th. Do you have any <laughs> ideas about that? You know what? What? I don't. That's is okay. that like <laughs> going inside about all the breakthroughs we've made? <laughs> right. No, nope, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Don't even worry. I know because it's maybe it'll just give us a time to like internalize and assimilate the changes. I mean, sometimes when it happens okay. so fast, we're like, whoa. Right? So maybe yeah. August 19th could just be a nice moment of integration and assimilation when Uranus goes retrograde. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the two full moons in Aquarius? Like, I know I we typically have those every other year, but okay, yeah, say more about that. I love that they're in Aquarius because of, you know, the, the, the social planets, Jupiter mm -hmm. and Saturn, meeting in Aquarius back at the solstice, starting this new cycle. I love that we've got two opportunities to see, like, the start, so where we started with mm. the first new full moon was at one Aquarius, yeah. and where we're going, the second full moon is at 29 Aquarius. So the second full moon, I think, is more about releasing, releasing um, limits on our hopes and dreams, whereas the first one was more like a backward reflecting. Yeah. I think this next one has more a future pacing something to end it and it's a lot gentler than the first one the first one was like really intense i know I, I didn't even know you had messaged me about this that the sabian symbol for that was the thunderstorms yeah and i'm waking up in arizona and i'm like what in all hell is happening in this desert right now i have <laughs> never seen thunderstorms like that in my whole life and so it's just like as above so below i guess right so yeah i have to look up the sabian symbol for this one because like i hope it's a lot gentler than that was yeah and the sun was on a pandemic and of mumps and look oh. where we are come on now this is what astrology just keeps helping us stay in business this is really good <laughs> so it's a gentle completion and you know what i also want to say Celeste, is i really yeah. love that you were discussing just really letting go of this sounds so shallow because we say it all the time, but like it's so essential, but the limiting beliefs that we have around the sort of dreams that we can accomplish. Yeah. You know, like, and, and would you say that your routines, not to bring it totally full circle, but would yep. you say that your routines and rituals were really helpful for the surrendering of those beliefs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Especially working with the Oracle cards and the, um, and the tarot because okay. it always helps me see past what I think I can do. And I have, I, I'm talking to myself as well that I need to um, a limit, release these um, limiting beliefs as well. Yeah, it never stops because what is 90% of our unnamed and undefined cognition and emotion drives our behavior? Yeah. Like this I, is serious, go ahead. Yeah, and think about where you are now. Could you ever have imagined your life as it is now? Think about the, the, your the accomplishments you were most proud of. Think about how they went past what you thought you could do. Yes. So, and think about the, the, the possibilities are endless. That's, that's my message. The possibilities are endless and try to. They really can be, I know. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna be honest, I wonder if anybody else who's born in Pluto and Scorpio feels this way. That's something we really struggle to intellectually and emotionally wrap our head around. Mm. Because I think we grew up in so many global catastrophes that were like, possibilities are endless. We're just trying to finish college 
without being strapped by student loan debt, or I can't even pay for my next semester, you know? So there is this quality of like, oh man, I want to believe this. I want this to be true. And yet my history and my past mm -hmm. really complicates that. But mm -hmm. it's, I guess it's part of the work. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. And it's that hard. could be it's, back. Yeah. So if that's a Pluto and Scorpio, it's hard thing, to have hope in such yes. in times of like they are now. Oh. But think about the evolution of the world, all the things that have happened. We've been through world wars and we've survived. We've been through, you know, all sorts of things and, and we've survived. And after a Pluto transit, there's a gift. What my uh, mentors Aunt Ortley always says. Oh, yeah. So think about the gift that's coming in the future by doing the work today. Okay, okay, I'm gonna sit with that. Yes, we're hoping. And, and my Pluto and Scorpio people are like, yeah, what the, because I agree with this too, I know. And I love what you said. And yeah. uh, Gabby said, is that where faith and trust comes in? Yeah. Personally, you better believe it on this on this part. What, how do you situate faith and trust while trying to maintain hope for the possibilities of the future based on mm -hmm. everything that's been going down the last year? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, faith and trust and hope, I think they all integrate together. Yeah. And just thinking about, you know, what is the other choice to, like, think about doom and gloom and, and um mass destruction i mean if you don't have you <laughs> walk through faith by grace whatever that statement is i just feel like it's it's the only way forward that is emotionally sustaining and fulfilling yes yeah, yeah. just yeah. yes yeah and it's not spiritual life uh, not denying it's not oh everything's yeah. crystals and rainbows i'm good yeah. how about you you know but it is just a quality of remembering that, yeah, hope and vision and faith is generative. And uh, I believe it was Octavia Butler, wasn't it, who discussed oh. how the quality of human imagination, because she was a science fiction writer. I love exactly, her. Oh, yeah, is exactly what's cancer, is exactly what will help us uh, create the futures that we deserve aligned with social justice theory and social justice movements. So it's yeah. a both end. It's like, yes, it's okay to be afraid. Yes, we're so sorry that these things have occurred throughout our lifetime and what what freedoms and perceptions and thinking habits can we develop now so that we can do it better and someone just said we walk by faith not by sight thank you emily yes thank yes you, yes emily. yeah and think about how many times you've catastrophized in your life and thought the worst was going to happen and then it didn't and like what a waste of time all that energy was oh my god <laughs> it, the waste of time the waste of the energy and then i'm just sitting there like yo i'm i am a dumbass what was i thinking you know <laughs> like why because i let the shame voice talk no i know and that's actually why one of my favorite lines from the bible is blessed are those who have faith who cannot see i mean yes that's that's yep. what we're going to do. This is hard work. Well, it is hard, yeah, and it's also yeah. different. But I really, really, really believe that, like, this is what we're all called to do. You know, as critically thinking spiritual seekers who have their we have our eyes on the sun, but we're tethered to the ground. You know, we got to acknowledge and name the problems that are keeping shit hard, but we cannot stay. Of course, the miracle says, "Look on the crucifixion, but do not dwell on it." I wouldn't have a story if it wasn't for resurrection. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and be present for like, be the observer, be present for watching what is happening through the world and how the story unfolds with astrology is just fascinating. So be fascinated and be present for the magic. Do you have Sag in your chart somewhere? Uh, no, I do not. No ninth house? Um, my Sag is my sixth house. Okay. And do you have any planets in your ninth or no? My North Node. Okay, because I'm like, yeah, you are unfailingly nope. optimistic. I freaking love North it. North Node and Pisces. So yeah, that's where my Sag comes in. North Node yeah. and Pisces in the ninth. I house. love it. I love it. No, and, and you're keeping like the North Node in the ninth of like positive perception bias, but like in a soulful spiritual lens. Oh, that's yes. beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. But yeah, folks, we're all kind of in a crucifixion phase, trying to stay to the resurrection, right? We're like. Buddha, who was numb, trying to get his nirvana. We are like the Israelites enslaved in the desert, trying to get to the promised land. All core theological and mythological stories have this narrative of, I was blind, but now I see amazing yeah. grace. I'm delivered. So this is the legacy we're working with. It sucks, it's hard, and we have tools, strategies, and people 
who will walk with you in this desert and get you to the promised land, I think. Mm -hmm. So yep. thank you for listening to my Course in Miracles notes there, but I figured we could go there. I yeah. could listen to you all day, Colin. <laughs> you are just so... <laughs> Likewise, I'm blissfully in love with you. I wish I was in Oakland because we're going to do this in person one of these days. I'm convinced. We have to. Yes, so, yes, know. yes. You are uh, you know traveling what? I, all over. Come to the Bay. I know. I'm going to tell on myself because the New Yorkers in here are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Because we don't know any geography outside of the five boroughs in Long Island. Like, no, we don't even know. We don't know where anything is, right? <laughs> so I don't even know if I am in Southern California. I'm in Orange County right now. How far away are you? Oh, I'm near San Francisco, so it's like, uh, it's a flight. It's a, oh, <laughs> okay. It's a, it's are an we talking, <laughs> are we like 10 hours? Like, what are we talking about? Like a 10 oh, hour drive? driving, it's like nine hours, probably. All right, yeah, because I drove from here to Arizona, it was like six. Oh, come up to the, come up to the, I know. the area. And I could have kept doing it. Okay, so the New Yorkers are like, ha, 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 so true. I'm like, no, it's, it is bad. Like, I don't know where I am half the time around here. So we really it's don't. It's beautiful. You could drive up 101. The coast is absolutely gorgeous. If you've never okay. driven the California coast. Listen, sure. I've, I've been driving these California roads, Celeste, and they are scaring me. These LA drivers, <laughs> I'm like, yo, you are, you are wild. I thought New York was bad. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, but yeah. I'm just totally unrelated. Shout out to Arizona. Best drivers I've ever driven with. Don't ask me why. They were just all amazing. Because they're 80. <laughs> they're driving slowly. Because <laughs> they're 80. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry, Celeste. Oh, my God. That is hysterical. <laughs> meanwhile, wait. Meanwhile, the speed limit over there is 75 miles an hour. Like, I couldn't believe. New York, I've never seen anything higher than 65, 50. So uh -huh. I'm going to Arizona. They're like going 80. I'm like, yo, what the? But they it's were It's the wild west. <laughs> Holy shit. I've never seen anything like it, but like, I loved it. Oh my God, that was so funny because they're 80. Celeste, I'm driving to Oakland. This is so funny. Okay, Yay! we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. Um, Let's do it. Celeste, I, I, I'm wondering, do you have maybe five to 10 minutes for questions that people will have? Oh, I would questions. love to stay for questions. Great. Yes, great, great, great. I wish I could read all the comments. I don't right. know why Instagram doesn't let us save them somewhere. Uh, no, I know. So hopefully, folks, if you have any questions for uh, Celeste Wisdom, Jess, I know. I'm so sorry about New Yorkers. We really, we just don't know shit unless it's right in front of us. Um, I'm open to that. So if you have any questions for Celeste, and in the meantime, do you want to promote um, your courses, your webinars? Yes, I do want to promote. Yes. Yeah. So I am posting four free videos. So first of all, for people who join later, Astrology by Celeste, please follow me. I'm hosting four free courses this month. Great. The first is on Saturday about the new moon. And then Maria, Sophia, and I next week are doing a horary, um, a horary and hot takes. So my hot takes are where I just bring people up and answer their like look at their charts and, and give them some insights of what I see. And then Maria is going to be answering horary questions based on the chart of the hour. Okay. And then the week after I'm doing a Leo, I'm sorry, the full moon. And then the week after I'm doing a new thing called celestial coaching, where I'll bring people up and just do hot takes and coach them on their careers or wherever they're trying to make changes in their lives based on their charts. They're all free. And um, they're leading up to, I'm launching my Moon Mastery, where you can learn to work with the cycles of the moon to bring abundance and expansion into your life um, in September. So, yeah. Yes. That's oh, what God. I'm working on. That's great. And you're offering readings, right? So if, if, if folks wanted yeah. to hire you for a consultation, they could do that as well? Yes. Yeah. Great, I, great, um, great. You can go to my website um, at the link in my bio and book a reading. Yes. Yes, you can. Oh, someone asked me about the about the symbols. So they're called the Sabian symbols. And what this is, is this um, clairvoyant Elsie Wheeler sat with an astrologer, Mark Edmund Jones, I think in the 20s in San Diego, and went through every single degree of the zodiac and channeled images. And he wrote them down. And so each degree has a Sabian symbol. So you should look up your look up the Sabian symbols for all your planets, but the sun, moon, and rising especially. And you'll see there's, I have found, and a lot of my clients have found, there's imagery relating to your own life around the symbol. 
as well as when we have lunations or big things, um, big activations, you can look at those symbols and they can unfold part of the story of what is going on for, for us in the collective. And cool. at the full moon, the moon was at the Sabian symbol symbolizing an unexpected thunderstorm, I think is what it was, yeah. Damn right. Well, I didn't even know that. Thank you for that story. Now I want to look those up. Yes. Uh, uh, so somebody asked about, oh, right. Uh, happy birthday, Kova, if you're still here. Wishing you a wonderful solo return. Um, somebody else asked you, hold on one minute. Um, any tips on navigating uh, Juno in Sag with the Sag Stellium? Navigating Juno and Sag with the Sag Stellium. So the South Node's been in your sign. So all sorts of things have been coming to your attention karmically about like if you do you feel like you've done the work have people come into your life as reflections for you mm -hmm. um i think juno and sag being there is a really call for you to think about how you partner with others not just in in romance although especially romance but just in general mm -hmm. i think it's a good opportunity for self-reflection with with uh with it there okay relationship with relationships we love that yeah. And then somebody asked, oh, they're, they're flowing so fast. I love it. You guys are great. Okay, so most, any tips on, oh, how are you uh, navigating being a North Node in Pisces? I'm loving it. Um, let me tell you something. <laughs> so I read not just, my, um, not just my natal chart, but I also look at my solar chart. Okay. So my North Node in Pisces is in the ninth house. And then if you look at the Taurus, put Taurus on the Ascendant. It's in my 11th house. I had so many wonderful things come in through friends while the North Node was in Pisces, while Jupiter was in Pisces that I'm so excited for next week, <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. I just felt the abundance. I loved it. Oh, well, because- like, Someone threw me a dinner party and like they, I was like, what are you throwing me a dinner party? It's not my, oh. It was near my birthday, I guess. It was for my retirement and like oh. just made me, baked me a cake. Someone oh. else on vacation, their brother uh, like splurged for this big, extra big house. I mean, it, was, it was just fantastic. I, because you know what, Celeste, it's amazing. People who have found, discovered you, talked to you, they have nothing but the loveliest, most affirmative oh. and supportive things to say. You know, you're just... Uh, of course, the miracles talks about how everything we do is infused in the consciousness with which we do it, and the consciousness you have around this work is so loving, so empowering, and that's just uh, unfortunately rare in some spiritual spaces. Aww. A lot of it is technique, utility, the mind, da 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 da, and you're like, relax. Let's just be a little bit more loving and funny, and like, let's just heal one another and. You just yeah. deserve all of it. I, I'm not shocked at all. Water is wet. You deserve nothing but love and belonging. Aw, thank you. Well, not shocked. yeah, and I feel the same about you. You are so giving and share so much of yourself and your time and your, um, your knowledge with everyone. It's just oh. wonderful. But yes. listen, and on that note, for anybody who's still watching, I am just so grateful for the, the community that we have and the conversations that we have. I mean, if it wasn't for Instagram and the internet, I mean, we wouldn't be doing this. And it just kind of like hits me every day. Like, I cannot believe that I get to do this for a living and I'm only able to do it because people are participating. You know, I'm not talking to an empty auditorium. Mm -hmm. and I'm just really, really, really grateful for that. So thank you. Yeah, your audience is the best. They have the, the best. best comments. So, in, uh, yeah, so incredible. Yes. They are, yes. They are the best. And people ask me what book this is, folks. This is the American Ephemeris. So it's like really the textbook for uh, astrologers. It has all the placements of like certain years. And it's kind of cool. It's almost like when you look at a planner from the past, mm -hmm. it like takes you back there. You're like, wow, like, let me see. Oh, March 1998. I wonder where Jupiter was. Conveniently enough. It was in Pisces, um, but it's, <laughs> so it's cool. That's what this is, people were asking. Um, yes. And then another friend of mine wants to know if you have any advice for Pisces Mars on not losing identity to adaptability. Ooh, mm, yeah, so, okay, so you have a Pisces Mars and thinking about the two fish swimming in opposite directions. I would ask like what conversations it's having in your chart. 
Okay. Where can you lean into Earth in other areas of your chart and looking? And at they the got a lot of it. Tara is the Taurus Sun and a Capricorn Moon. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. I would lead, lead into the Taurus Sun and the Capricorn Moon. That that trying to bring practicality and stability and to um, yeah, especially that Taurus can know what is. You can get embodied and feel like what is right, rather than get out of that, um, get that fixed energy involved. <laughs> get, call up that fixed sign and say, honey, get on the line. I need you here. Ah, oh, Raspberry, <laughs> the, uh, Patricia says that, that you're my audience too. Oh. I love it. So many of your people have come to my things as well. And I'm so oh, thankful. That yes. Makes so happy. yes. That makes me so happy. I wouldn't expect any, I wouldn't expect any other thing. You know, it's all about collaboration. No astrologer can know everything. So we're, we're about, we're choir not soloists so this yes. is the way, you know yeah. oh celeste i could stay and talk to you forever unfortunately i have to record some shit now but i appreciate you so much we should do these like actually monthly you know the eclipse took us out of it yeah but we should do just like monthly check-ins with celeste i love it i love it let's do it Let's do, and maybe the next one can be in person. You know, I gotta Let's figure out where it. I'm gonna Come be. to Oakland for Virgo season, and we'll do a lot. <laughs> uh, I love it. There is, there's something about Northern California and Virgo, and like it, it fits like a hand to a glove. I really like this. I okay. love the idea. Yes, yes, love yes. It. Well, yes, thank yes, you so much, Colin. Thank you for everyone who joined. Yes. I have a wonderful new moon. I hope you'll enjoy me for the the, the webinar Saturday morning, and yeah. The yeah. link's in my bio. Will do. And thank you so much for being here, Celeste. Thank you, everybody else, for being here. And we will see you so soon. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> Bye.